Hey GearFax friends, here is the Zoom G21U, one of man's greatest advances in science. Let's have a close look though and you'll see that these dials here are quite unresponsive. If I turn backwards to the left, I'm just getting the maximum value. If I turn back really slowly, I can make it work, but it's certainly not ideal. All three of the dials are doing this and this is a very common problem with the G21U and for others in the older G series. What we're going to do today though is try using some compressed air to free up whatever's causing this little blockage in here and try to get these knobs functioning a bit better. Let's see how we go. Let's give that a bit of a go. Wow, that is a remarkable improvement. Not so good with that one, but I've still got much better control than before. Let's try this one on the end. Not so good there. Okay, let's try doing it a bit more, because it seems like we are making some progress. Give it a really good blast. Whoa. Okay. Let that all evaporate. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's leaving a bit of a sheet of ice on the front of it. Let's see how it functions now. Oh, it's kind of frozen in its socket. But, it's doing pretty well. That is a huge improvement. Wow, I did not expect that to be so easy, Gearfax friends. I thought that we'd be taking these collars off and digging a little bit deeper into the mechanism, but there you have it. Get yourself some compressed air. It'll really free up the dials on your guitar effects pedals, at least with the Zoom G series. It works really well. So, thanks for watching this surprisingly short video. Actually, no. If you were thinking it couldn't possibly be that simple, you were quite right. After a couple of minutes, the dials did start to sort of seize up a little bit again. So what I've done now is got a pair of very fine pliers got into here and loosened up these collars a little bit and I'm just going in underneath right. surprising the amount of crud that comes out of them okay now I'm hoping that this will improve things a little bit I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes and let this metal come back to a normal temperature because the surface does get very cold let's see how we go this time Okay, so the dust has settled on that now. Everything's back to normal room temperature. Let's see how these dials respond. Okay, let's take it right up to 1. So that's a maximum value. If I dial down, it's still a little bit flaky, but it's not hard to get it down past halfway. There we go. It only took a few seconds. Considering it was virtually non-responsive before, that's not a bad result. The middle one, as we discovered before, was, was pretty good, really. 0 to 10 there, no worries at all. So that's completely fixed. The last one, which was probably the worst of the three. Again, still slightly flaky. But if I keep the speed reasonable, I can access any quantity that I need reasonably quickly. So there you go, guys. A bit of a false start there at the beginning, but it turns out you just have to give it a little bit of perseverance and you can end up with nicely functioning potentiometers again just with a little bit of compressed air which will cost you about ten dollars from plenty of different shops anyway i'll say it again thanks for watching gearfax thanks for liking commenting or subscribing and I look forward to seeing you on the next video